Hi everyone and welcome back to our second podcast of the year. We're so excited about what's happening today. We are talking about a very sensitive, very serious topic and it's entitled Untying the Knot Divorce Dynamics in the Church. We've got the usual culprits, our people from 230 Conversations. Hey. We've got Upu Uliander, say hi to the people. Hi guys. <laughs> then we've got Usista Nomakavi Sonkia. And my name is Mtanda Zo. And we've got our very special guest for today, Upu Usia Kamela. Let's welcome him. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so, 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 Sia comes in in the capacity of um, someone who has gone through what we're going to discuss today. Someone who has gone through the journey, not an easy road to walk in, but something quite uh, sensitive, something that we need to discuss even as a church, individuals, as friends, as the community, and as the nation as a whole. So he is a man who was once married um, and went through the process of untying the note when he at one point he had tied the note. So let's talk about his journey and what he has learned and what he has to tell us and the things that he went through in all of this, isn't it? Indeed. Oh, indeed. perfect. So let's try and hear his side of the story from there on. Um, Sia, yeah, thank you for joining us once again. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Yes. I just have a question for you. <laughs> what made you want to get married? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think without being religious, okay. I, I will say that um, she pleased me. Wow, thank you, please, Anna. <laughs> please do well. <laughs> um, yeah, I it's something that was not planned, which I think is the case, by the way, with a whole lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, you find yourself falling in love with someone, you don't pre plan it. Once you are with them, you then feel that I could actually spend my life with this mm -hmm. person, and I think that was just that. Wow. That was the reason. Wow. Why. And um, was the like physical attraction? Was it phys more physical than? Um, because of the way we met, I wouldn't say it was physical. More than I think, I was more attracted by the intellectual oh, capacity. Oh, wow. lovely! Beautiful. Um, you know, church, attending Sabbath school, meet someone who's a teacher. Uh huh. Uh, you know, facilitating the lesson and you listen to them speak and their confidence and, you know, nice. and you get attracted to that. Uh -huh. like, okay, you know, and you meet her again and again and again. It then led to a point where uh, she invited a friend of mine for lunch uh, after church one Sabbath and I just joined in. I told her, if you invite my friend, I'm coming with. <laughs> yeah, wow. And that lunch invite became uh, another lunch invite and until it got to a point got, where, Until it got to a marriage, eh? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, so this proves that these lunch invites are important. They're very eh? important. Invite. So much lunch for yes. lunch. Go yeah. for lunch. Go for lunch. <laughs> you know? That's how you get married. Go for lunch. <laughs> Don't leave church after church. Go for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Tell me, um, so, so you, you, you got married. Mm -hmm. um, how long were you married? I was married for 14 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. 14 wow. years, uh -huh. uh, 2006 uh -huh. until 2020. Until 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're looking at years. Uh, four years ago. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's how long the, the divorce has been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, would you recommend marriage, marriage to, to anyone? anyone? I would recommend marriage to myself. Wow! <laughs> Once hey, again! Hey, I, I, I can't imagine I next. Yeah, this man doesn't kill the manga. <laughs> no, look, I, I would recommend marriage. Okay. Um, for, for, for various reasons. Yes. All right. Uh, particularly for a man. Mm -hmm. I, I think from my experience, marriage does bring some sort of stability. Wow. Mm -hmm. It does bring some sort of stability to a man. We, we, we are wired as loose. Cannon. Cannon. Yes. Yes. You know, that's how we are. But once you get married, you feel contained. You feel that you, when you have someone who's able to say to you, okay, we don't do this, we do this, this is how we, you need that as a man. And um, especially if you have, you have someone compatible to you, I would recommend marriage. Oh, so you're proving that women are actually helping. It's actually that. I 
fully agree with you. Oh, I, I fully uh, agree with you. Uh, um, they say splendid. if you marry the right woman, yes. you become a. What do you become? What do you become? If you, be, if you marry the right woman, you become. There's a saying that goes: a successful man. If okay, you marry so the wrong woman, yeah. you, you become, become a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> you become a philosopher. <laughs> Or a motivational speaker, wow. or a prayer warrior. Okay. <laughs> wow. you. Oh, I heard you, you say that you were married for 14 years. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 14 years is a very long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you had kids in the 14 years. Had kids in the 14 years. Um, when I met my ex-wife, she already had a daughter. Okay. A very lovely young girl, okay. which is something that may be part of the conversation we should talk about at some yes. point. Okay. Because yeah. Stepfathering is a is a totally totally separate and different yeah. conversation that you need to have, yeah. and it's not everyone that is able to actually live through that. Yeah, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we then had three kids of our okay. own. Oh, wow. um, my son is turning eighteen this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second son is thirteen, and my little princess is twelve. Oh, and yeah, we had kids. Yeah, that's- we yeah. had four kids all together. Ah, that's okay. beautiful. Maybe, so, yeah. maybe just to take us back in part, just mm. slightly. Um, would you say that your love experiences during your relationship phase, mm-hmm. when things were getting serious for you, shaped uh, the marriage experience? Mm. So in other words, I'm, I'm indirectly asking, how was the love life mm. that got you that's to a point important. where I'm taking this one mm. and she's the one? Mm. Um, I'm going to start on a negative. Okay. 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 And say that, of course, maybe as a lesson yeah. right? okay. to younger men and those who are maybe planning to get into marriage, okay. mm-hmm. that marriage will not change you. Okay. Hey. Hey. What, what you do and what you become before marriage, you will definitely become that mm-hmm. after marriage. Mm-hmm. It then becomes very important. I think the question that you were indirectly asking earlier, Mm-hmm. What made me decide to get married? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It becomes very important that you become intentional. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because once you become intentional, you know that you actually need to fix the character, yes. behavior first, mm-hmm. you know, which is something, unfortunately, I would say on my side, contributed to my marriage. Okay. Oh. That you, there's an aspect that I discuss with younger guys all the time the issue of, uh, looking at things that are not as important for an example the looks right you know you are a young man good looking you have a lot of ladies looking at you and you know and you use that as something to boost your ego Mm -hmm. Uh and you move with that attitude into marriage it affects your marriage yeah Mm -hmm. and and without getting deep into (laughs) into (laughs) that but into that you know uh, uh, yeah so you'd say that um your character doesn't change. You just you go into marriage as who you are, and you do you get to change? Does the person change you? Do you what is it? You do get to change, mm. particularly if there is willingness on your part. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I think that change will be affected by the first step of you acknowledging. Okay. That all right. All right. Oh. Yeah. I've met this person, mm-hmm. and of course it goes both ways. I've mm-hmm. met this person. We may be having different characters, mm-hmm. but for this to work, I may need to change one, okay. two, three. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know. Yeah. yeah, so compromise, which yeah. is Very another important. thing. Important. Yeah. Very um, important. How far does a person, is a person willing to compromise? Did you feel like you had to compromise a lot of you? Because I'm very sure when we get to the part where we're discussing, what happened, what when you changed had to untie in the, the knot, course when you are, the marriage. Or, <laughs> there's yeah. reason. So would, how far do you feel like? Uh, without compromising myself, I, I needed to make quite some changes. Okay. All right. Quite some changes in relation to how I view marriage at first. Mm-hmm. Uh, I must say one of the most important things to do before you get married is to really know that you do want, want to, to get, get married. married. Okay. But right. not only that, you need to know that this is actually the kind of person that I want to get married to. Mm -hmm. And of course, you do that by premarital counseling, Mm -hmm. which is something that I think most people take for granted, granted, which I think also on my part, it's something that I took for granted. Um, If I were to go back and 
fix something, it would definitely be that. All okay. right. So you you are so so since we're talking um about the issue of, of untying the knot, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think the first part has been it was a beautiful yeah. thing. We the love part and all that, <clears throat> but that but that's not what we're concentrating on. Yeah. What changed? Yeah. I, I know these this questions are very personal, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but we need to ask so that we can learn. Mm. Maybe what changed during the course of the marriage um, and the problems that came through? Because mm. for you to get divorced, you must first be married. Yes. So the requirement for divorce is marriage. So what changed in the, in the course of the marriage and how then uh, did you try to solve the problems uh -huh. uh, that came with the changes Right. In the marriage, yeah. Um, sure. Uh, the first few years of the marriage were quite good. Okay. They were quite good, um, happy. There were a lot of moments which I really still cherish up to this day. Mm -hmm. um, it was not all gloom and doom, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, what changed was pride. Okay. No. That came. Okay. Into the picture. Mm -hmm. I, I usually say to people that is one divorce that was not supposed to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if you allow pride, yeah, to step in, you may find yourself mm -hmm. in a position where you lose someone. Okay. That you love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without getting into details, um, okay. I would say it was it mainly pride. pride. Where whether you are the wrong or your partner is wrong, but you don't get to a point where either of you acknowledge that you know what i was wrong and therefore i need to you know so for an example i'll make an hypothetical example mm -hmm. uh, where let's say you you discover that your partner is cheating okay. for an example right and once you discover that the fact that for all these years you, you they've always been the one that is on the right but this one moment, just that one time, just that one time, right? and they feel that, hey, I've messed up so much, mm -hmm. and what I've done cannot be forgiven. Mm -hmm. And they take that posture of saying, you know what, I've done it anyway. Okay. I'm making that as an example. Mm -hmm. And that may lead, you know, to a point where instead of fixing what could have been fixed, you end up separating with the person. Mm -hmm. okay. right. Yeah, I like, I like how you've uh, been honest about that you know i think a lot of people don't come out usually they're blaming one another anyway mm -hmm. around that but the bible says that pride comes before, before a fall, fall. Mm -hmm. and admitting that is the first step to you know i'm very i like also that you said you would you would recommend marriage to yourself because mm -hmm. nice. you have come to realize certain things um agreeing agree um look um there are certain things that i know now which I wish I knew. You're a philosopher. Wish I knew. Wish, <laughs> wish I wish I knew then. There, there's those small things that as men we take for granted. Okay. Uh, where you see a woman as an egg, yeah. you see them as being petty. Yeah. You you stay at home. I mean, away from home until late. You know, small things that you do, and you don't see the impact. Uh, you don't do the things that you used to do when you started mm -hmm. dating the person, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. small things. You get used, you get a person used to opening a door for them, for an example. Yeah. And now that you have them, you no longer do those things, you know. Um, if she complains about something that affects her emotionally, you, you want to reason, you know. And if you cannot understand where she's coming from, yeah. you then dismiss. Those are things that, with time, a person detaches, you know, because if yesterday I'm raising a point with you and you don't seem to get the emotional aspect of what I'm raising, tomorrow I won't raise that point. Okay. So there's a lot of bottling up that then builds, you mm. know. So it's all of those things that you then learn later that had I taken care of the small, of the little things, hey. you know, the day-to-day little things uh -huh. maybe things would not have it would have been a bit different i yeah. thank you for saying that yeah. i am i am a woman i am the rose <laughs> among the thorns uh, right uh, now uh, 
<laughs> hey, thank so, you for mentioning so, so this. On, on the change aspect, yeah? mm. there's a question I wanted to ask, but you already answered it indirectly, mm. that mm. do you feel it was fair the way mm. you lost your relationship or your marriage? Mm. And indirectly you said you feel it's a marriage or divorce that was not supposed, supposed to, to happen. happen. So you feel that it was not supposed to happen? And it, so in other words, if you could return and go back to and fix some other stuff. You could, you could fix them without. Here's where I'm going. So, so me, you're saying if we could go back and fix. That's what he said. Yes. So I'm saying, I'm okay. saying, the question that I was posing is do you feel that the way you lost your relationship, was it fair or it was unfair? Um, sure. He answered it. Nothing, right. nothing is unfair okay. in life. Okay. Okay. Nothing uh-huh. is unfair yeah, in life. I, I think. I would never blame anyone for okay. the divorce that I went through. Okay. I would not blame anyone except the person that is sitting right here. Yeah. And I, I, I always take the responsibility, uh, not only as half of the party, but as a man. Okay. Yeah. And I believe that it's something that we really need to take seriously. Men, you need to take responsibility for your mm-hmm. relationship. Mm-hmm. The failure of your relationship yeah. is on you. The success of your relationship mm-hmm. is on you mm-hmm. as a man. You cannot delegate that to, yeah. to anyone else. To anyone. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's true because men are the ones that make advances. Nta always says that. Most of the time. Yes. Most of the time. <laughs> well, that's the, well, men are the chasers anyway. Oh, wow. Most of uh, the time. Most of the time, right? <laughs> Podcast will talk about that. <laughs> okay. Just, so it's, I like what he says. Basically, men set the tone as yeah. well for mm-hmm. their relationship and the way it goes you start we are trying to win us mm-hmm. and then you get me used to this thing you're buying me flowers every week hey i know and i tell my friends these things the next thing one day it's gone mm-hmm. See, yeah at 10 p.m he's not coming in with flowers <laughs> you understand yeah and and those are the things that kill and women sound petty when they're complaining about these yeah. things but it actually helps the relationship, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So when we complain about small things like that, you should open the door for me. Yeah. Why don't you? I'm not complaining because mm-hmm. I want to nag you, but I want you to realize that it was making me feel like you, I'm important, uh-huh. you know, valued, seen. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's the small things. The small things. I, I, I want to comment on that mm-hmm. and, and say that one of the lessons I've learned is that the, having a happy wife is the best thing hey. you can ever do okay. for yourself. Hey! Yes. All right. Pin day, pin day. Yes. Pin day. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let me repeat that. Yes, having please. a happy wife uh-huh. is the best thing you can ever do for yourself. Yes. I, imagine putting yourself in a situation where you spend your whole life with someone who's unhappy. Mm. And you know you can do something about it, mm. but you just don't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you spend your, your hours with this person, yeah. you spend the night with this person, you mm. spend your life with this person, but you still are not able to meet a basic, mm. basic emotional need that yeah. would make her happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a result of what you have caused yourself, you decide after work that yeah. I cannot go back to that house right That's now. Yeah. Mm. Let me go via. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're trying to think that once I get into that door, I'll be meeting an unhappy face. Okay. Mm-hmm. But yet, it's something that is within your powers to it's, fix. Uh, yeah. You know, so um, instead of investing your energies on, yeah. in, on fixing and making your partner happy, mm-hmm. you, you know, yeah. you decide yeah. to run away. Yeah, so, so, the day. so to a say. quick one, quick one. Somebody's relationship or marriage is changing now. Yeah. What, what words do you have for yeah. them? They are, they are realizing their shit is in general. First chance mistakes make the second chance endurable more than enjoyable. Okay. Oh, okay. Say that again. All right. First chance mistakes. Right. Okay. Make the second chance endurable okay. more than enjoyable. Okay. okay. Uh, because you, you, there, there are mistakes that we commit that we can never recover from. Mm. Let me make one biblical example of something disastrous that could have happened. Mm. 
when Jesus was standing up on a hill mm. and Satan says to him, if you are the son of God, right. throw yourself uh-huh. down. Yeah. Had Jesus made that one mistake, mm-hmm. we would not be here right yeah. now. That would have been one mistake yeah. that would have been costly mm. for eternity. Mm. And I want to say to a young man, a man who is married and they are doing what they are doing, which they know they are not supposed to do, okay. that you may be putting yourself in a position where your mistake may make any second chance that you get in life endurable. 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 You don't want to go through life yeah. enduring yeah. situations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. That's what I would say. Thank okay. you. Wow. That, that, that's fine. Yeah. And, and then, um, how did you, when did you realize that this marriage is done? <laughs> no, you, you, you divorced in 2020, <laughs> yeah. right? In fact, yeah, it was yeah, finalized in 2020. Fin- finalized in 2020. Okay. When did you realize this thing's gone? Um, when on the 21st of March. I still remember, remember the, the days. days. <laughs> <laughs> on a Sunday. Yeah. Oh, 2020. Yeah. I had to leave the family house okay. and go and stay by myself. And four days, five days later, the president announces hard lockdown. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that? that? <laughs> so it was hard for singles. What yeah. about those who were single? Yo. Yo. So you're there. All alone, uh, no support system. Mm. I had one friend, my best friend, mm-hmm. Meg, who used to sneak and come and see me literally every day. Mm. Uh, had it not been for that guy, I don't think I would have survived that okay. mm. Um So I was alone, literally alone. And I think that's where I knew that because mm-hmm. I'd never experienced something like that before. Mm-hmm. I had never had to leave hope, right. you know. I had never had to be away from the kids, you know, mm. because just two years before that, I was staying with the kids most of the time yeah. because my, my, my ex-wife was working in Pretoria and I was with the kids literally every day. Now to be, to have to be from away them. from them um, under circumstances where you know you cannot even go in, you know. <laughs> sure. And see them. I think that's when I, I knew. No, you know, this thing is, is, is gone. May it's I gone. ask? As Mjolo is painful <laughs> when you break up. <laughs> no, you understand. Exactly. What what about divorce? How I'm talking about emotional pain. feelings. Yeah, the pain. Yeah, can we yeah? I, deal with the honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I have pictures that I shared with a friend some two weeks ago. Mm. I'll show you guys after this. Uh-huh. <laughs> of how I lost weight within a week. Oh. Yeah. Within a week, and I would not want anyone to go through it okay. mm. if they can avoid. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um. I, I, that's one experience I would not wish on any person. Mm. And and because of that pain, I am more determined. That whoever is going to be part of my life next mm. will ah. never have to go through yes. ah. that pain again. Mm. I think mm-hmm. that's the that's the positive part. Wow. Mm. So, so mm. embedded in, in Namakabisa's question is this question of looking back in retrospect and reflecting. How did that experience of you being alone during lockdown shape the person you are okay. today? One of the good things <laughs> that I did for myself that period. Uh, that was March, April, May. I went through counseling, oh. virtual counseling, yeah, for, okay. a, for a good All eight right. weeks. Yeah. Oh. So okay. every Tuesday, every Thursday at 12, I would have these video calls with my therapist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that is what shaped me. Yeah. And I'm, I want to bring something very important into mm-hmm. this part. Mm-hmm. That, that is where I learned that there were a lot of childhood traumas. Yeah. That were actually affecting okay. my behavior. Mm. Wow. Underlying factors. And mm. those were left undealt with, unattended, and up until mm. that point mm. where mm. someone had to 
make me realize that it could be because of one, two, mm-hmm. three, four, five. But what is also very positive is the fact that I then had to deal yes. with those. Yes. So you would leave them, you would, have, you would have left them unattended, maybe since childhood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you get to a point where you now have to address them. Yes. Yeah. And it's not an easy no. thing. No, it's not. It's not an easy thing. Mm-hmm. It, it, sometimes it involves family. Yes. Sometimes there are questions which mm. are, you know, there mm. at the back of your mind, which you don't have answers to. Yeah. And you, you, you now need to deal with that mm-hmm. and no longer leave it. Yeah. I it. think that that space is the scariest space and a lot of people are afraid to get into that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where you actually now have to deal with fear. Fear is this kind of mm. a person. Begin to accept yourself. I also think, in as much as it sounds so painful, it's the right time. It was the right time okay. for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, maybe you wouldn't have even heard anything if if the world was open and you could go out and yeah. do all those things. Yeah. And now it has caused you to be this person who mm-hmm. can recommend marriage again for uh, himself. For anyone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but but wow. again, you know, I, I'm 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 also very concerned about the the role of the church. Mm. Um, in the role of the church, your family. Your extended family. <laughs> People are watching yes. the breakdown of a marriage. Yeah. Everyone can see this. Yes. Right? Usia well, has moved out. Usia mm. is no longer staying with his wife. <laughs> ne? The wife is there. Usia is there. What is the role of the church, the role of the family, in trying to even solve this kind of thing? Mm. Do you feel like um, they were there um, or not? Do you feel bitter towards God? And also... Even your own spiritual life. How did that really... You talked about the like, physical life. Yeah. Yeah. You lost weight. Yeah. And, and then there's the part of our spiritual, spiritual life. God, the Bible, when we go to our church, our church pastors and preachers will say, God hates divorce. God hates divorce. But okay, divorce is a reality really, in our yeah. church. It's something that happens. What is their role and how did you feel about that? I'll, I'll, I'll use two instances. Okay. okay. Um, which are negative. And then I'll talk about the positive. Come okay. now, The The... One very senior uh, mom fundis in the church, mm-hmm. just after we opened, after COVID, right? Yes. Uh, she's not seen me since, and I think most people were not aware up until much later mm-hmm. because of COVID. I mean, mm-hmm. we, yes. no one would see you yes. or experience you personally. Yes. Um, she, it was a pathfinder day at church. And she comes and she says, where, where are the kids? And I told her not they are with their mom. And she said, you know, Lento Yenu is affecting the kids. Yeah. Yeah. No. Lento Yenu. Now that was a very, that was a blow for me. It was yes. at, at that time, I was not yet at where I am right now. Yes. Uh-huh. Where I'm strong enough to deal with such negativity. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Very senior person. But a person that you would otherwise go to when you have when you have problems, problems right yeah. you know um then one uh, man of god pastor makes a comment to a friend of mine unaware that i'm very close with this person but hey man i heard that you see i you want mm. i say i think it's good mm. because they were not compared wow oh. Now, this is someone that, again, you'd go to. You'd go to, go to yes. right. you know. Mm. Um, and, and I'm not saying that is the church. Yes. Mm. It's individual. But those it's are individuals, individuals in the church. In the yes. church. Uh, so, when this whole thing was happening, I, you have people that you are close to mm-hmm. the church. People that you are able to mm. rope in and say, you know what? Here is a couple in the church that have always been, we've always been looking up to. Mm-hmm. Let's throw them in. Yeah. And there's quite a few of those that I can count on a positive now. You mm-hmm. know, that would come in, listen, and, you know, advise and, you know, try to mm-hmm. get us to, you know, mm-hmm. back together again, including some pastoral families, you mm-hmm. know, physically and those that we could consult with, you yeah. know, virtually. So there was quite, to an extent, a role that was played on the positive. Okay or on the negative yeah. by church members. Mm. And I'm, I'm specifically saying church members yeah. because I would not want to blame the church, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, for individuals that may behave, yeah. you know. And however, the, the silence yeah. 
and the lack of intentional mm. intervention and support from the church mm-hmm. is what affects a lot of people mm. because you you never feel the support you never feel the support mm. the church is not intentional we are intentional about getting people to be baptized mm. yes. right? we get them through a program mm. that will lead them up to yes. baptism mm-hmm. but we don't have a program that really speaks to people who are going through mm. stuff yes you know so um, uh, one time i was then asked to preach recently i think about two years ago a year ago and one lady made a comment ah by am shumaili you know it's all because people don't know how to handle and deal with a divorced person hey. that you know the church is not equipping its members to be able to you know you to deal with people that are um, I I agree I agree you know I, I think when we were talk, planning this I also thought about it you know does the church actually really or is it intentional about helping you know emotionally I like that you said going through stuff because mm. there's a lot of other things and the house of the lord is supposed to be a place where we can run to So I think that in our church we need to really be intentional about this one. Maybe we'll save a lot of marriages. Mm-hmm. Intentional as well. Like now we're having this podcast and you are sharing your nuggets yeah. and your views. People like this can be brought on to things like that. Yes. You know, to help the church be able to support people. Maybe mm-hmm. we'd even save I like that you asked also what what could he say mm-hmm. to a relationship that's changing mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. There's a lot to say and experience even if it shouldn't be like that is the best teacher at the end of the day yeah. yes. so people like this yes, now need to right. start a structure like that but but but, but again how on that um then how how what would you suggest the church does because you see look look at the predicament that the church is at mm. um re- marriages and relationships are private entities mm. i get married in the institution of the church mm. but i live my life Privately. very separate from the church so i'm having problems with you my wife right mm. um And it's a private issue. Sometimes the church doesn't feel equipped enough yes. to come and knock at the door and say, "See ya. Yes. We know you're beating your wife." Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as a church, here's what we are saying, right? The church sometimes doesn't know whether should I should I go in or should I should I stay out? Yeah. You know? Should, what should I do? Yes. Because if I come through and say, "No, but that's that's my issues with me and my wife. Get what out. are you doing here?" You know, I would. So, how, what would you suggest okay. the church does? You can you know what? I, 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 I'm yeah. just a bit. Yeah, I'd love to I'll, I'll know that. Yes. Let, yeah. let, let, let me start from the end. Yes. Okay. Where the church does get involved. Okay. okay. The the church would get involved where you now have to remarry. Okay. Mm. And 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 because it's Gosh. stipulated mm. in the guidelines that mm. if you remarry. The church would then need to come back and revisit what were the causes oh, of your previous yes. uh-huh. marriage. Uh-huh. Now, if and and my point here is that if yes. the church does get involved at some point, uh-huh. it should then be interested. Yes, yes. Uh, exactly. From from from, 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 the, the start, from 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 start. From start. Yeah, you know, and that that is my personal view that mm-hmm. if at some point, let's say tomorrow, I decide to get married. Uh, the church knows and and of course it's guided by what the bible teaches that mm. you know if you divorce your partner you you should not remarry and the church i think takes it from that yeah. mm-hmm. that is why there would ne- then be disciplinary issues, issues around it around yeah. it you know but then my point is that you then need to show the care yeah. mm-hmm. yes. from when the person needs you yes. you know because you 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 really need the church yes At, at that the, point yes. you know. i think that the church needs to come in isn't it when you're doing premarital counseling it's a pastor that pastor should never leave you it's sad because there's too many maybe there's too many marriages maybe, maybe. then the pastor is over but i don't think that the pastor should leave you yeah. from the time he's counseling you up until up until because the, that that tra- i don't know is a training i don't know what the counseling looks like but people evolve as well you know and that pastor should also be there in helping you navigate i'm very sure part of their courses have that yeah so so comes the taking off from your statement that experience being the best teacher there's a spin and the works a bit 
could it not be that the challenge is being thrown to those who have experience to actually start the run of making practicality of how do we deal with people who, whose marriages are falling off? Because when people don't experience something, they don't know how to help you. Exactly. Which comes to your point. Yeah. yeah. So it could it be that maybe it's a challenge thrown to you guys? I don't know. I'm not saying it's accepted or what. Yeah. Something for you to think about yeah. that if I've experienced something, then at least yeah. I know how to help yeah. the yeah. next person. It, it, it's <laughs> that that would be like starting a two thirty conversation. <laughs> 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 And it, it it can take you forever to yeah, get um, support mm-hmm. and, yeah. and, 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 you know, uh, yeah, right? some form of buy-in. Mm-hmm. Look, the church does have a family life ministry, mm-hmm. you know, as a, you know, as one of our ministries, which I think in it, mm-hmm. we should maybe also focus on how to deal, particularly with ladies. I think we've had a lot of complaints mm-hmm. from ladies who are other widowed, or divorced, divorced, who are then seen as a threat yeah, by other women. Yes. You know, it's yes. something that is there. Yes. And we then need to be able to, to deal with it. When you have a family life program, it should not just focus on couples. Okay. Yes. Or, or your nuclear family yes. set up. Your nuclear family set up. It, it yeah. should focus on each and every yes. individual yeah. that you yeah. find family, in the church. Yes. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Whether it's a single-headed family or a child-headed family or, mm-hmm. you know, I think we should just be yeah. all inclusive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. May I just say this to you? I think that it's important for us to mention this since we are having this discussion. Yes, please. That the church is made out of individuals. Yeah. Number one, we all need to be sensitive to people's challenges. Yes. This is another way of helping the situation. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I really, it actually pained me yeah. to think that there's someone who could speak the way what you experience, you yeah. understand, and, and, and not be sensitive to what God see yes. here, you know, and, and be, let me choose my words. Let me choose what I'm saying or how I treat this person. Mm-hmm. So the church also needs to be sensitive to people's challenges yeah. and the stuff that they're going through. You do not know what, what it's cool. Yeah. 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 And, and also, again, um, no one gets Married to divorce. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think anyone who goes to the altar and ties the knot uh, looks forward to a time when they will untie, untie the, the knot. knot. Yeah. Our church is very insistent, and the Bible is that marriage is a, an eternal thing. Yeah. 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 It's a relationship between us and God, yeah. and Jesus uh, looks at us as the bride, and it's a forever thing. Do you feel that God disappointed mm. you? Wait, was there a part of your life mm-hmm. when you were very bitter at God? As to, you could have saved this Lord, <laughs> and you let this thing burn. Um, let me let me let me use. I think it's Matthew eight, mm-hmm. eight, yeah, yeah, eight, fourteen, eight. Mm-hmm. It was fourteen. The two incidents of the boat and the waves, and okay. I think it's Matthew eight, where you know, the disciples are with Jesus right. mm-hmm. in the boat, and he goes down. Yes, in the boat. There's a storm. Eventually, they went and wake him up, and he calms the storm. One of my favorite writers has this to say. Okay, in answering mm-hmm. your question. Yes. <laughs> that the the first mistake that the disciples did was to allow Jesus to sleep. Okay. Okay. When there was no storm. Yeah. All right. Say that again. Uh, yeah. the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let, so the hear, first mistake, divine service, right, allowing was mm. allowing to Jesus, Jesus to sleep, sleep. Yeah. when there was no storm. When there yeah. was no storm. Okay. All right. Okay. And but also later, after Jesus had calmed the storm, oh, okay. mm-hmm. there's a portion in that story that says that the water was filling the boat. The boat okay. Right. So after Jesus had calmed the storm, the disciples had the responsibility of emptying the boat, okay. or removing the water out of the boat. Okay. Right. And, and my object lesson there is that when, when the marriage is good and there, there are no, there's no storm, yeah. 
we, we sometimes allow Jesus to sleep. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you get comfortable. Yeah. Everything's fine. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm doing yeah. this. I've got this. I've, I've got this. You know, you don't really let Jesus remain as the anchor okay. Okay. that holds yes. the marriage together. Okay. Yeah. Right? Until there is a storm. And it does calm the storm, okay. like in my case. Okay. Uh, there was that storm of divorce. He calmed it. Okay. But up to today, I am still dealing with the responsibility of having to take, the take, take a bucket the hey, and remove, remove and the remove water. the water. Hey. I, I'm, I'll mention issues of having to negotiate your way to, to meeting the kids. Yes. You know, having to, you know, there, there's, there's so many things that yeah. you still have to deal with mm. that are still very much linked mm. to the marriage that you have been detached. Mm. So you can never really completely detach mm. from that. Now, uh, did God fail, disappoint me? I think I allowed him to sleep. Okay. Okay. Um, I like this honesty. Yeah, I I allowed him to sleep. um, Okay. And the storm arose, and I still bear the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the honesty. Mm. Around wow. okay. divorce. Mm. So, eh, uh, yo, wow. What what does life? There's a question that's spinning. There's a question that's spinning quick. Okay, go ahead. I was thinking about it on the highway. Do you believe that people ignore red flags from the word go? Yeah, we do. Yeah, no, we definitely do. Uh, we we do. We we got we get to a point where we turn them to blue. Okay. We don't only ignore them, <laughs> but we, we do the we, work we of dying. You repaint. <laughs> yeah, you go. How do you repaint a blue? Sap, I use bar red. I use bar red. Ah ah. Jam tan. I use bar red. So, so that that is usually where the heart wins over the mind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey, no. hey, hey, that's, that's the problem with, with, with this thing. Yeah. Get like an emotion, you yeah. know, yeah? Yeah. Guys, And the heart you... wins over the mind. mind. How do and, you and do red this? Becomes, and even just, <laughs> Razin, you can look at something red. We born with no, I born with red, but me, you red, yeah. You red, yeah. You red, yeah. Guys, wait. Guys, can I ask a question? Guys, all of us, have red flags, guys. Mm. We As if have. <laughs> eh, we just need umpos <laughs> 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 What is about blue <laughs> <laughs> okay. ne? We all need that. But yeah. how? This is another question that we ask. A lot of us are not, we're not married yet. Yeah. How do we help ourselves to realize which red flags? Oh my God. Are okay to compromise. Tick. Because there are red flags that we cannot take, oh. guys. And we are definitely supposed to cut this relationship because this flag is, is a red juve. It's not a flag. Mm. Red oh juve. Hey. And it's flying high. <laughs> this one, <laughs> do not ignore it. But we still, we allow excitement. Mm. And then we take this red juve in. Eh? We fold it. So but it again, that's, what are we supposed to that, do? That's part of being human. While it's yeah. coming, yeah. that, that's part of being, let's this, this allow ourselves the human experience. Mm. I love his honesty when mm. he speaks about the things that he went through and his yes, part in yes. all of this. Ne? Uh, the heart will, at most times, mm. win one, over one, the oh mind. Yeah. The heart wants what the heart one. wants at she the end of the day. Me well. She yeah. pleases yeah. me. That's what Samson said. I, that's, 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 yeah. I want that one. <laughs> so so in, in, in line with that then, mm. um, while we see, talk about the red flags and all, I, I would, would also want to know, what is life after, after divorce? divorce yeah. what, what, is, what, is, what does Sia <laughs> look okay, like yeah, now? After divorce. <laughs> When's that? Uh, there are stages. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There are stages. Mm-hmm. There are stages. And I think one is still going through all of those stages. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll start with the now and then go back. Okay. <laughs> 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 I like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Look, um, one thing good about life is that time heals. Yeah. Uh, I think that is one thing that we Imagine. should mm-hmm. just embrace. Time heals. Yes. But time takes time. Mm. time. <laughs> so the healing won't be today. Mm. It won't be tomorrow. tomorrow. It will take time. Mm-hmm. But eventually you will heal. Yes. yes. Um, I'm, in, I'm in a much better space now okay. mm-hmm. uh, where I don't see the divorce as really a negative. 
but it was a learning curve. Okay. okay. Uh, there are lessons, lessons, plenty of lessons that I've learned. Uh, lessons that I, that make me be intentional about the steps I take going forward. You become intentional mm -hmm. that because of the pain of bending your <laughs> finger, hey, yeah. you no, don't want to go to no, that. You, don't. you know, yeah. you, you felt the pain, you mm -hmm. know what how it feels. Like. Yeah. You know, you, you'll be very stupid yeah. to want to, yes. to go through that again. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, if, you were ask, if you were to ask me this question in 2020, 2021, mm. um, I was a mess. Okay. Mm. I was a mess. Um, and and being a mess comes with other challenges, mm -hmm. you know, even change of behavior. Yes. Mm -hmm. You need to change even the kind of relations you had. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you'd have common friends yes. with a person. Mm -hmm. And now the very same people are starting to distance mm -hmm. themselves from you. You don't know who to mm -hmm. reach out to, you mm -hmm. know. There are those things that you have to deal with. And this you is know. a backdrop of 14, 14 years. Know, 14 years exactly. of solid friendship yeah. forms. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, you, you don't know how to behave. Even in, for an example, if let's say my kid's grandmother is not well, yeah. you want to reach out Ish. because you had a relationship. Yes. yes. But now you need to restrain yes. yourself. You know, you, there are many incidents where mm. you, you, you learn that, you know what, this is a process. It okay. gets better with time. It gets better with time. But, yeah, I don't wish that yeah. I'm on sure. anyone. While you are there, you were dealing with the emotional, you were dealing with the church, you were dealing with letting go of friends and all these things. How was the legal, the legal side? side to the um, Ash asked this question. Where's the <laughs> Ash? Where's Ashley the lawyer? <laughs> just, just call Ashley up. <laughs> Look, I'll be honest, mm. my, I never participated in my divorce. Okay. Oh. And as a result, it, I got to know that I'm actually legally divorced nine months later. Oh. So the filing, I got summons in October. Mm. That's 20, 2020. 2020. Uh -huh. I got summons in October 20, on my birthday. Yo, hey. you got served. <laughs> hey, Gosana. <laughs> you got um, I, I did not have the strength to deal with anything. I was, I ignored them. Mm -hmm. I ignored them. I did not do anything. And mm -hmm. I never had to go to court or have to, I never contested mm -hmm. anything. Okay. Um, but I think in as much as I did not respond to the summons, I knew at the back of my mind that I would not want to get into a legal battle, battle yeah. you know. And I, I also knew that I wanted to leave and donate everything, everything. that was mm -hmm. there, you know, yes. particularly for the kids, to the kids. And I knew that, but I thought in my mind there will be a process that I will have to be part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I never even consulted, by the way. Mm. You know, I, that's how I ignored the yeah. summer. Yeah. And by December, Everything was finalized. I didn't know until September the following year. That's when, almost a year later. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When 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 I had a meeting with my ex-wife to discuss other things, and she told me, oh, "By the way, I got the decree." Oh, when? In December last year. Mm. That's how. That's how I was. So I was never really mm -hmm. involved the, yeah. Yeah. in that process. However, even though I was not involved, I still had to commit to my donations in terms of the properties we had and everything. I still needed to commit and yeah. sign them off to the kids. And that was just a very easy process. Yeah. Because my mind was Yeah. Yeah. And then speaking of the you have you have um an eighteen year old. Um kid one is twelve, right? Yeah, thirteen and twelve. Thirteen and twelve. Um how has been the effect of, of the decision that you and your ex-wife have taken? What, what, and what is your relationship like? Kids, and these are 18-year-olds, they see this. 12-year-olds see things. Yeah, they, do, yeah. they can process certain things. Mom and dad are no longer together. How, how has been the relationship? Do you feel like they blame you? Do they take sides? 
in all this uh, all of this um are you are you the bed ship in the whole thing <laughs> you know it, as a man usually we, we, we take the blows mm. at the end of the mm. day right not necessarily that we're always in the wrong yeah. but but how how is how has been the take in terms of, of your children and all you know if there's one aspect where i saw the hand of god in this mm. whole situation mm. was with my kids those kids are just amazing oh. Oh. they are amazing um we we did well because when we took that decision, we set them down. We, we set them down. And we had that last family meeting where we needed to engage them and, and tell them exactly what the situation is. And in as much as initially there was no reaction, but their behavior afterwards was so much supportive that it gave both of us strength individually mm-hmm. up to this day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I thank God for that part. Mm-hmm. I have an amazing relationship with wow. my kids. Oh, I have beautiful. access to them. I see them every second weekend. I mm-hmm. see them during the week. And it's amazing. Oh, it's that's amazing. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Amazing. Right? And I'm, they are able to open up and talk mm-hmm. about it. You know, and we we have okay. a an open discussion mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, and yeah. and I think that's very important. While while we talk about divorce, and someone may be listening, um, and it, and it could be a couple that is is going through that. I think kids cannot be used as tools to oh, fight. Yes, yeah. please don't. I think it it really does affect children <laughs> when when parents are separated. The least yeah. you can do is to try to make an uncomfortable situation. At least as bearable. comfortable as possible. Yes, exactly. Mm. That's the right word. Bearable. Yeah. Mm. You know, because we don't have to feel like I need to take dad's side mm. and take mom's side. I think there should be that part where we say this are this is the product of when we had it good. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to keep them because they did nothing wrong in mm. all of this. Mm. Right? And it affects, and the black family has a problem with Honestly. all of them. not just the black, but pretty much divorced families have a problem with that. It affects children mentally. We are scared of committing because we saw what happened when my mother and my father committed and they broke up. And it was a mess after that. So we really, in a certain way, want to thank Uputsia for, for, for coming through and, and giving us this whole perspective of what things should be and how they've handled it with the ex-wife and, and all that. Ne? And, and, and I know this is very serious things ne? Yeah. and sensitive, but I wanted to ask a question in my heart. Ne? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you may. <laughs> uh, see ya. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Um, dating after marriage. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. How, how's that coming up for you? Is it? Yeah, uh, is it coming up for you? <laughs> or, or people look at me like, hey, what red flag, man? Yeah. yeah. No, no, put me on the red flag. Yeah. How uh, has it look, been for you it, as a man? It, it has been a wave. Yeah, my wave is very good. What to wave a tea? Wave a tea. It has been a wave, but yeah. it's it's now steady. Okay. Very steady. Yeah. Um, um, I, I think I'm at a stage where I'm ready. Wow! Look at this! Wow! He's right. online. Right. He's ready. We should do a show, Lucy. We don't move along. We don't move along. I know. No, we. I think. No, I think. Right. I, think it, I think everyone deserves. Yes. But but let me let me let me just let me just conclude that by yes. one way. Just okay. Right. Okay. Yeah! Nice! Oh, nice! You only had it on Tuesday! Nice! That's what you said. 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 And I think, I think, you know, that's the beauty of, yes. of all of this, you know. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, life, life yeah, must go. Must yeah. go on yeah, life must really oh. honestly go on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we appreciate, I think, it's been a very sensitive, oh, yes, uh, but also eye-opening conversation. Yes. And I think, if you give us your parting words, what would you say? Um, to those that are still married, especially the men, please take care of your women. Hey. Um, there's a song that I love so much. It's a secular song, but okay. it's um, tan. Okay. Oh, oh. Wow. You got invited to the wedding. <laughs> 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 it's just two It's just two gifts. Uh, <laughs> just love your women. Take yeah. care of your women. Uh, respect them. Mm. Uh, honor them. Yeah. And just love them. Yeah. Yeah. Just love them. They deserve it. Mm. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. Ah, that's wow, beautiful. That's Lee, give us your parting shots, man. Uh, two parting shots. One, please don't use kids 
to fight the lost battle. Uh huh. But do like, subscribe, share this video <laughs> so we can reach a mass audience and you know be able to reach multitudes all around the world. But here's my parting shot. Let's deal with our trauma. Uh, marriages, relationships fall apart. Meet your lawyer too. It falls apart because we don't deal with that aspect. Whatever big green monster or red or purple or whatever, deal with it. Mm -hmm. It will help you a lot. That's mm -hmm. my parting shot. Thank That's you. That. Thank you. Yo, I have men. <laughs> yeah, I took away a lot from this and um, I'll give you two. The first one is be intentional. I think this is the thing that's not happening a lot. You know, people are not intentional. Being intentional means, yes, you are also going to participate. You're going to listen to a woman complaining yeah. about things and understand the emotional aspect of their complaints. Women are emotional. We are wired like that. It's not our fault. Everything touches us. <laughs> You're attached. Yes. And the second one is pride comes before us all. Oh, if we can just also be intentional about putting ourselves aside. I think a lot of our conversation here really revolves around the word of God, yeah. even if we were not direct. Yeah. Um, but pride comes before us all and we need to take care of that. Then the final one is love is a beautiful thing yes for those that have lost hope yes. i know others are not even married yet but they've lost hope but here's a man who's been married and he's made mistakes yes. but still believes in yes. love mm. so believe in it even for myself uh, i will begin to believe <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I i would um i would say to to i might to maybe the guys let's check up on one another. Okay. And as I'm at the toilet, let's, let's open. I'm so touched by what Sia said, you know, when the church doesn't know what to do. As friends, as gents, um, let's check up on one another. Guys are perceived to be strong. That is not true. The, the highest suicide rates are not among women, they're among men. Yeah. Men go through a lot. And as I'm at the let's learn to open up. If in your marriage, in your relationship, in your life, there's things that are not going on, reach out. Now, Kona, when people have reached out to you, when, when, when you reach out to people, the one that has reached out to you, where now, whom you are talking to that person, learn to have secrets. Mm. Preserve the secrets yes. of someone, you know? Mm. Preserve the dignity okay. of whom they are going through a lot. And let's destroy the stigma. He is our friend. He our, was our friend before marriage. He will be our friend after yes. marriage. Our, the marriage never stopped the friendship. It might have started it, but it will never stop it. So, so in essence, let's not stigmatize one another. Let's cover each other's uh, uh, errors, each other's problems. You know, because I think the Bible says love covers a multitude of oh, sins. The, the more we do that, the better it becomes. So I think that's been a beautiful conversation. Yes. Eh? Yes, <laughs> we want to thank everyone for uh, watching this conversation. Please like what Uli said. Please like, share, and also subscribe to our channel. We also want to thank our our, our Ben Glade Photography and Media House for doing a wonderful job making us look lighter than normal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make us look very handsome. Mm -hmm. And our beautiful queen here on Norman Clabiso, mm -hmm. uh, Opodu, Leander, and Mina Aung and our special guest, yeah. Opodu Sia Kamala, hey. Mr. Sia <laughs> <laughs> We want to thank you. And from 2.30 Conversations, we say, see you on the next one. Bye-bye.